Hey everyone, Cobra here. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, we're going to have another video today on the Grand Mafia. So today I'm going to be teaching you everything you need to know about your underboss. So I've gotten a few questions about this, so I did some research, and here are the answers for you. So, you have all these enforcers, you are able to pick one to be your underboss. Now what that means is your equipment... So if I click up here at the top left, all this equipment, any combat boosts are tied to that enforcer. Meaning if I go to attack something and I do not have this enforcer in my lineup, I do not get the equipment but boosts. So like this right here, I wouldn't get my extra stats towards my hitman or my, my bikers. Also, the specialties tab. Anything you have on here also only applies in battle when you have your underboss. So same thing with that. You can have, you know, this maxed out and get the 53% biker attack from this tab and the however much from the other tab and the 17 from the other tab and have all these stats. But if you do not have this enforcer that is your underboss in your lineup, it does not apply. So... Are certain enforcers better than others to be your underboss? The short answer is not really. The longer answer is you just want to make sure it is an enforcer that applies to you. If I'm going to attack with bikers, I want to make sure that my underboss has boosts for bikers. Because if I have a bruiser underboss and I'm sending armies of bikers, it's not going to help me as much, and I might be more tempted to not send my underboss. So you always want to make sure it corresponds. For me, uh, for a lot of events, I've been using bikers, and so I put him on. Now I'm going to show you how to switch it. So if you click at the top left, the profile, it'll pull up this page right here, and at the right next to the button that says Equipment Sets, there's a little thing with two curvy arrows. You're going to press that, and it'll bring up all of your different people. And if you click View Skills, it will show you what they do. You can see he's good for biker attack and biker defense, as well as some wall defense. You can see for her, she's really only good in combat for bruiser defense. So that's not going to be as good. But, I mean, if you have one like... This guy right here, biker HP, biker attack, crew defense, he would be a good one to use if you were attacking. Now, if you're defending, you could either use one like this that has all combat skills, or you could use one like, say, Sparrow, that has traps HP and combat skills, or him, trap defense and combat skills. Or we can go down to... I believe it's anonymous. Traps HP, combat skills. Those would also be very good ones if you are defending. For attacking, you want ones that have as much attack or much combat stats as you can get. So it's the most effective. And like I said, make sure it corresponds. Because if I'm using, say, her, and I send out a biker army, she's not going to buff anything. Her ability isn't going to do anything because it's all bikers. So it doesn't do bruiser attack. Her bruiser defense is not going to do anything, so you want to make sure it corresponds to that. But as far as does one give you more buffs than the other, no, it really doesn't. The only thing you have to be careful with is your underboss can get captured. If you lose, if they wipe out your troops, your underboss will get captured. While it's captured, obviously you cannot use it. They can execute it as well, and then you will be temporarily without an underboss. You will lose all your specialties buffs. You will lose your equipment buffs for that time period. So you want to make sure you take care of your underboss to protect them. If you know you're going to get wiped out, you can always stash them in the storehouse. And look at the top, hide underboss to avoid imprisonment. But better than that, just make sure you are able to actually defend your base. I'm working on another thing for defending a strategy that I will post hopefully in a little bit here 
and by that I mean in a few days to a week. Um, I will let you guys know on that one. But yeah, as far as underbosses goes, really it just depends on what you're doing. If you're attacking, you know, just make sure it corresponds to that troop, gives you those combat buffs. And if you're defending, make sure it's got combat buffs and or wall or sorry, trap buffs. That way you can get the best of both worlds. Other than that, honestly, it really doesn't make a big difference as long as you don't let them get captured. But just remember what I was saying. All these buffs, the equipment, and the specialties are all tied to that underboss. So you want to be aware of where they are at all times. Should be in your best army. Should be They will always be on your wall since you cannot take them off. They cannot come off. So hope this helps. Uh, just a little bit of information about underbosses. If you have any questions or anything else you would like me to go over, please let me know in the comments and please like and subscribe. Um, the more support I get, the more videos I will be making. I hope this helps.